welcome to another episode of 31 Nights of Horror with me, Sam, and Dan. And today it's um it's the omen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to start us off? Yeah, yeah, as always, it's your turn. Um the omen, which if you guys haven't seen it, this is the nineteen seventy six version, not the two thousand and six remake. Always watch the original. Always watch the original. Um Richard Donner, the director, who, if you know your film history, he did The Goonies and the original Supermans. Um, and Gregory Peck is the lead character, which, again, if you know your film history, is the lawyer out of To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, it's the story of a political ambassador, I think he is, for yeah. America. Yeah. Um, he has a son born in the early morning of the sixth day of the sixth month um, at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, his son dies and instead the this priest says, look, you can adopt this child instead. And he chooses to adopt the child because he doesn't want his wife to know that they lost the baby. Mm. So they adopt this child. Um, five years later, um, we have some strange goings on with the child. Um, and it turns out that he is the son of the devil. Um, uh, who knew? Yeah, who knew? And uh, Mr. Fawn, who is the lead character, um, Damien being the name of the son, um, is warned by a priest after one of the creepiest bits of cinema history where the nanny goes onto the top of the building and shouts, it's all for you, Damien, and hangs Thank herself. You, in front of the whole birthday party. I think it's Damien's fifth birthday party. Isn't yeah, it? there's children everywhere. Yeah, and watching. So that um, Mr. Fawn starts getting warned by a priest that you know his son is evil, and he was there at the birth of his son. Mm. Son, um, to which he obviously ignores, um, and they bring in a new nanny. I think she's pure evil because she is basically the protector of Damien um, and she brings in a lovely little Rottweiler. Um, yeah, they don't discuss the Rottweiler or anything like that. The family don't know about it. And then the nanny turns up and then the dog just appears inside yeah, the house and she's like, I'm keeping guardian. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. Mr. Fawn sees you know, other things going on. Um, the priest warns him that he must save his wife because if he doesn't save his wife... His wife is pregnant. Not long after that, Damien manages to push the mum off down some stairs um, and then she loses the baby. So this obviously allows Mr. Fawn to mm -hmm. believe the priest, but it's too late because the priest gets a spike through the chest in quite a cool visual. No messing around. Yeah, no definitely messing no around. messing around. <laughs> um, and then Mr. Fawn is warned by a cameraman who is actually my favourite character in the whole He's film. He's awesome. Yeah, um... And they dig a little deeper and they find out that the true mother of Damien was a jackal. Um, they actually um, find a grave and inside the um, coffin are jackal bones. Yeah. And there's his actual son's bones buried yeah, in the it's pretty sad. one next, next to it. But I think um, with those bones, was, the, was it just me or was the skull caved in? There was something. Oh, the boy. Yeah, because he saw. Yeah, of because that's how they knew. That's because he turned around and went, "Oh, they've murdered my son." Cause yeah, because that's what I thought it was, but I wasn't one hundred percent sure. It's they obviously murdered his son, so they could go, "Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Have this one instead." Yeah, because you, know? you know you keep a supply of devil children <sighs> around know. if you're a priest. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> they are attacked by a load of Rottweilers for finding these bodies, and they manage to get away for a little while. Um, then the cameraman gets it. He gets beheaded by a pane glass going right across him, which was sad. I didn't like him dying. He was my favourite. Um, but Mr. Fawn is told that he has to use these three knives to kill Damien. Yeah. And if he doesn't do it to kill Damien, then Damien will kill him, basically. Um, and so Mr. Fawn comes back, deals with the nanny, who's a bitch. She's horrible. 
and he is just about to kill Damien when he gets shot by the police. And then we'll, the last image is we get to see Mr. Ford's funeral and Damien turns to the camera and gives this nice little creepy smile. Yeah. Um, that's the synopsis. It's the mad. Film. It's absolutely, it's, it's a bit silly to start at the end of the film, but it's so good at the end because you just see two coffins, a funeral, and you're just made to believe. If you didn't know there was any more movies, you'd just go, did get killed because it's not clear whether Damien got killed at the end because you just see the gunshot go off you don't know if he gets stabbed or not yeah and then you just see these two coffins and it's like oh, it's the end yay and then you see the president and um, the first lady yeah, I she was um, standing there with Damien yeah it's which like, if oh crap. if they hadn't continued the films which I think they shouldn't have because I think um, the other There's ones aren't to. very good the other ones where I think they continue like Damien's growth, didn't they? Yeah. But if they had ended it on this, the there was like a little poem thing, wasn't there, where um, the Jews leave Nazareth, the, there's a comet in the sky, um, and he'll be born in a sea of... I can't remember what it was, but basically this poem was saying that on the day of Damien's birth, the Jews left Nazareth, there was a comet in the sky, and he was born in the sea of politics, which... Obviously, his father, who adopted him, was an ambassador to the president. Yeah. And at the end, um, the ambassador died because um, Mr. Fawn is warned that he will kill him once he knows that he... It was basically all about power. He needed power. Yeah. And he would kill his dad as soon as he knew that he would continue being powerful. Well, if there's no more films, then this one ends with the president and the first lady having... Damien, and obviously there's nothing, there's no more powerful than the President of the United States, so yeah. if they'd have ended it there, I think the second one, it turns out he goes and lives with his cousin, doesn't he, I think. Um, Not 100%. I wasn't hugely sure, I wasn't a huge fan of the rest of the Omens, I did like this one, I didn't mind the remake, we might as well tackle the remake, the remake wasn't too bad, the only problem I have is, when you're watching this... I sort of mix up the remake with this one. Oh, I, I knew I loved this film. It is one of my favourites. I think it's bloody brilliant. But um, I don't, I didn't remember all of it. I remember chunks, but I'm glad because it meant that I could be surprised. Yeah. But I, mean, it's I don't remember the remake that much. But I know that you'll always, you should always pick the original. Oh, definitely. But I think yeah. um, with the remake, I think the one scene that I sort of remember. I mixed up from the remake to the original was you know when they go and see they go and see um, the priest that um, Mr. Fawn took the baby from and there'd been a fire and he'd had his half his oh face. his yeah his yeah. eye was all burnt and yeah, he could use one side yeah I remember in the remake they're in a courtyard and uh, he uh, writes it down and that's what I thought what happened in the original but obviously oh, okay. in this so you're one you were waiting for something to happen yeah whereas happen. in this one he was in a room and he used a rock to carve it into stone and didn't he yeah. So I got that bit completely mixed up. I mean, it wasn't a massively important part then. But no, still, of if you're waiting for no. something to happen, yeah, it's not happened. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, oh. I mean, the I remember the, the yeah. best bits of this film. I mean, I obviously remember the hanging death, which you know which is, is one of the most, like you said, iconic moments in not just horror but you in know film in history, film history yeah. because it's so brutal. It's, it's very brilliant. brutal. It's so, so creepy. basically stands on top of a house, doesn't she? Jumps off with the noose round and then goes flying through a window and then just hangs in this window. And it's it's quite a, a strong image to see. And, like, literally, yeah, it's like, yeah, she's dead. It's brilliant. Sort of thing. It is a very good one. It's a very good... Because, obviously, um, the reason that happened was just before that, she saw a Rottweiler who we sort of, I don't know whether, I, I don't know how you took it, but I took it as every time um, a message seemed to be being sent to Damien, there was a Rottweiler around. Yeah. So perhaps, I always took it that the Rottweilers were the protectors. Like in the cemetery, they attacked well, the like, dad, didn't um, they? Well, they're like Satan's messengers, aren't they? That's what I was about to say. Like Maybe crows. they're the messengers yeah, I think rather so. I think than so. that. Because Cause until Damien can fully... Because he was quite scared in moments of the movie, even though he is the devil's, you know, devil's child, he's going to be all the rest of it. He um, he was still quite frightened when stuff happened. Yeah. And he wasn't, I don't know, it's like he hasn't fully taken it on himself. He hasn't become that person yet. So I guess 
at the moment it's in as an adult, which is I guess the point of the other movies. He needs guidance and he needs protecting. So yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I yeah, so right. I, I never really thought about it, but I guess they are more than I always thought they were the protectors. But I guess really they're the messengers and um, the nanny that comes in. She's the obvious protector. Yeah. She protects him from everything. She is seen. fucking creepy. She is so scary. She's brilliant. The beginning, the, yeah, they. The bit where she goes to kill the mum, she kills off the mum by throwing her out the window. The, literally, the shot is she gets closer and closer to the camera. And she looks more evil as she comes closer to the camera. She's There's so many good arty moments in this. Like, at that moment, um, in particular, the the mum, she has obviously, she got thrown off a balcony um, by Damien. And that's the reason, obviously, she's in the hospital. But she's trying to get changed because she's just been warned and she needs to leave the hospital before this happens. And um, she's pulling her like nightdress over her head to get changed, but obviously she's in like a massive cast. And it's just like um, one layer of it comes over her head and it's like a veil. Yeah. And it's almost to portray how innocent she is in all this because she's just a loving wife, you know, a loving, well, she's, she wants to be a loving mother. And you know, as far as she's concerned, it's her son, but she's just having all these doubts. And so I think that's to portray how innocent she was in a way. Yeah, yeah, because she started to have doubts and she started to and she felt have really bad. feelings towards yeah. Damien because obviously it wasn't her child. Sort of she thing. didn't know that. She never found that out. Did she? I mean, she we didn't... have to tackle her getting knocked off the balcony bit and thrown to the floor to go into the hospital because it was so ridiculous. Literally, this, you can huff all you want. No, it was. This woman falls <laughs> off, okay, and she's falling like this, and it's like someone took a, I don't know, a doll and rotated it very slowly Yay. to make her fall onto the floor face first. It was ridiculous to watch. There were a couple of awful effects in this movie, but if I'm being honest, I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm forgiving. Like the glass one. Like the glass comes towards him so slowly, and it comes. It takes his head off, and it's like a doll's head. You can see it's and a it, doll's head. It just yeah. rolls. And when um, the dad is cutting the boy's hair to see the six 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 to prove that he's the devil, you could tell that was a doll's head that he was cutting. He wasn't actually cutting a no, person's head. No. Um, it, yeah. they are, it is awful. And there was some overdubbing before the mum fell down because it was obvious that she wasn't saying what was being said. On Maybe the it was a re-edit. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not surprised if they didn't get that right completely the first time because it was such a ridiculous score. <laughs> it, it was, was pretty so, bad. Yeah. Um, it was quite funny. It does take some of the horror out of as it. Mu as much as I, I feel there are problems with this film, um, I kind of overlook it because it's a... It's a English horror film, which is always good, an old English horror film, and when I watch it, it reminds me of, it does, it's really weird, because it's one of those films that I should watch it, and I should get all these nostalgia things about The Omen, yeah. but I don't, it makes me remember, I don't know if any of you guys at home um, watch them, but the old Hammer House of Horror um, <laughs> TV show, it was kind of the same sort of English um, film sort of thing, and it I love Hammer House of Horror. Hammer House of Horror reminds me of being a child and sitting home and watching it. That, Tales of the Unexpected, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Goosebumps, you know, all of those. And I just, it brings a lot of nostalgia out for me. Fair enough. Yeah, I love Hammer House. I tried to show a new Hammer House, yeah. didn't I? And he's a, you know, she managed to watch one, which was about a werewolf, where he was a logical man because he's a lawyer. <laughs> I'll give them a go at some point. Yeah, no, done. you should. But yeah, it's nice to see like an old English horror. Yeah, um, it's strange. It's a huge film, massive film. Yeah. And the um, the music is very effective. I was going to say the use of music because um, before all the horrible stuff starts happening, I mean, it happens pretty quick, but when everything still feels quite innocent, the music is so innocent, it's so nice. It's almost um, like Little House on the Prairie type, isn't it? It's so mm. pretty and sort of, oh, isn't life wonderful? You've got this, you know, powerful, well, not really powerful, but you know, the powerful family that are rich, they're happy, everything is just nice, and, and it's so all those lovely. You had photos, didn't you, to show Damien growing up, and you had all the nice yeah. little birds singing. It was so everything. pretty, and then obviously, mixed in with that is this really sinister music, which yeah. is, and then by I the like end, it. By it's the end, it was loud, wasn't it? 
<laughs> like monks singing it's yeah, very oh. it, was, it was very powerful very religious obviously it's gonna yeah. be it's about the devil's son um, well, you said about um being born into power that was actually and i i probably should be able to quote it i can't but then um, it's actually a quote from the book of revelations um that talks about him being born into power yeah, because so, the yeah. the poem that I was saying, the Jews leaving Nazareth, and that, yeah. that's not in the Bible. That was actually, no, 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 no. That was actually created for the film. Yeah. yeah, it was it was sold to us like it was from the Bible because a priest said it, but no, yeah. it was definitely from the just made for the film. Um, which I think, um, if I remember correctly, a lot of bad things happened during the production of this film as well. Yeah, there is um, there's a very good documentary that we'll have to. We'll have to find it and let you know about. But um, it's a very good documentary about lots of horrible things that happened to people working on the film, and um, basically the idea that the film was actually cursed. I haven't seen it in years, so I don't want to say stuff that hasn't. That I, I read. Read a, I read a few bits. Like yeah. I think um, Gregory Peck, um, the main character, the actor, the main character, I don't remember and it. a producer. I think they were both on separate planes, and both planes got struck by lightning. Oh. Yeah. And, there was a few other things. There was like some accidents that happened. Someone actually got bitten by the dogs when the dogs attacked. Um, stuff like that. I think it was... I, but then, to be honest, I think it's during that age. Because um, if you remember watching our Poltergeist review, there was a few spooky things going on happened there. And if we do decide to review it, I believe there was quite a few spooky things that happened during The Exorcist, didn't it? Um, I think it was during that age that spooky things just happen to happen around horror movies well I, I don't want to say cliche because I don't think that's the right word but yeah, that no, is, you, if you make no, no, if you make movies about the devil then bad stuff happens but that could just be I don't know it's it's, it's the thing isn't it it is a controversial subject but if you any film that you that has been made maybe originally I don't know about nowadays but originally about the devil bad stuff happens Maybe it's because they thought that, so obviously everything would get into the papers and everyone would suddenly it'd be big news. But it's not a nice thought. No. You're just a play. You're just an actor in a movie. No. Like, because it happens to be about the devil. Bad stuff yeah, happens. It happens to be about the devil. Yeah. But no. Uh, no. I mean, um, when it comes to characters, I wasn't a fan of any character except for the camera guy, and I was actually quite upset when he died. Which was, it was quite a cool death, but um, yeah, I really liked him. He was the one that I didn't want to die. I didn't really, I mean, I didn't mind the mum. She was a bit moany. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Mr. Form. Um, I remember hating the nanny. Hated the nanny. And, oh, and I always felt sorry for the dogs that got it. Oh, no, because you know what? They were just the messengers, and I like Rob. Just Wallace. the messengers, so... Damien was just a messenger. Damien wasn't a messenger. Damien was the actual son of the devil. He isn't a messenger. He's going to bring back the world. Those dogs, the they would not have been friendly to anyone apart from Damien. He's the, he's the only person they would have been nice to. He would have ripped the throat out of anybody who got anywhere near him. Oh, they're nice little dogs. No, 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 they're they not. Like they're the not. Way. They're threatening yeah. They're threatening in real life, though it means to be. They're not, they're not, they're not bad dogs. They're, We're not getting into a debate. They're frightening. On them. They're the frightening looking. Of I don't. I personally don't like them because I think they look frightening. I'm not saying they're bad dogs, but I'm saying it's just been because of these movies and probably this movie in particular, it's drilled into a head that they're frightening dogs. They're intimidating dogs, but it's because of the media that's given them this image. Yeah, I completely get dogs. they're not bad dogs. They're not at all. But if I see one and I'm walking down the street and it's not, it's not got a lead with it. I would be a bit nervous. Prejudiced <laughs> against certain dogs. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm I, being honest. I've never. Like dogs. Yeah. I, in fact, I remember actually feeling sorry for the dog. It's as stupid as it sounds. Um, near the end, when the nanny gets killed, you've got this dog locked in the cellar, and he's trying his best to get out of the cellar. And when the nanny gets killed, the um, dog actually cries out in pain, and it was like. Oh, that poor dog. As much as I wanted the nanny to die, I didn't like hearing the dog in pain. She gives those looks. She's been with me when we watch like Turner and Hooch and that. I have a bit of a soft spot when it comes to dogs. And mm. I like Rottweilers. But that's spiralling out into a different one. Um, 
he did mention, we've not talked about it at all, which is kind of a big issue in the movie, um, the photographer hasn't been explained. He takes photographs and he was at the beginning at the party and he takes loads of pictures of people, uh, obviously, and he, um, he keeps appearing all the way through it because obviously he's involved in politics, the main character. Yeah. And when he starts analysing the photographs, he'd notice things like um, the priest he had like on the photograph he had like a line of light going through like this way through the photograph across his body and then he ended up with a massive um spike, spike going through like a javelin would and literally did it was, identical to the and i think photograph. there was a photo of the nanny having something around her neck mm. it before she committed suicide so he starts looking at these pictures and sort of noticing yeah weird stuff that's why and he I gets think, involved later on i think it wasn't fully explained in this one but it was in the remake. It gets used in a lot more because the um, yeah. rock thief thing comes down, doesn't it? Because I think in the remake, I think he takes a picture of himself and it shows himself being beheaded. Yeah, and he Whereas doesn't really... in this one, it doesn't. But then the weird thing is he's very desperate to make sure the child's killed. So I'm willing to believe that he does know about it in this one, but they just didn't fully sort of tackle it. Yeah, one. maybe. I don't know if this was a book first. I probably should do my research. I think there is a book. If about there was this. a book, it's probably the sort of thing that would have been left in and not used because, to be honest, they were probably more worried about <laughs> having too many effects and things like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah. yeah. By the way, where she keeps on looking to the side, she's got notes. She's checking notes. I can I can see her looking. No, I'm not <laughs> saying anything like yeah. that, but. In case people are watching the video going, gosh, she's really bored by this video yeah. review. She's just um, checking her notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's it's one of the, one of the best horrors, and it's definitely probably yeah, it's definitely in my top ten ever. I think of horrors. I think it's brilliant. Um, it's just such a good idea. Children in horror movies are creepy. They're creepy because they should be innocent, and they're really not. Yes. In I horror mean, movies, though. I remember the. Um, the picture, the picture of the omen, where it's just literally Damien, he's got all those um, American War cross gravestones behind him, he's got like loads of them behind him. Yeah. And then I also remember for the remake, um, literally there was no trailer for the remake, it was the child Damien sitting in the swing, slowly, and then he suddenly looked at the camera, you know, the there is something definitely powerful about an evil he child. He does that at the end, doesn't he? He looks straight at the camera, at the and, camera breaks, and breaks and gives a bit of a smile. Like, which, you know, is, is pretty cool. I think I read um, a little bit of trivia, you probably don't care, but um, <laughs> Richard Donner um, actually used reverse psychology on the actor because basically he's a child actor, so he tried to, every time he was acting, uh, Richard Donner was trying to get like a natural reaction out of him and he turned around to the child and went, if you laugh at me, I will not be your friend sort of thing. And obviously um, the smile that... Um, Damien does at the end that's the child actor trying his best not to laugh right at the end and it turns into like a really sinister smile which shows the greatness of Richard Donner Richard Donner is an amazing director um, I mean he did this he did yeah. The Goonies which if you're around our age or if you were alive in the 80s if you haven't seen The Goonies where the fuck have you been um, <laughs> and the original Superman film which mm. is one of the greatest comic book films yeah, it just shows great direction, I thought that. Um, rating? Have you got your rating? Or have you got anything else to say, sorry? Well, I mean, the only other thing I will add, and I probably shouldn't be advertising something else alongside this, but um, there's a really, really good indie game that is so... It's like, if you love this film, which I do, um, you need to play this game. It's called um, Lucius. And I might put a little uh, picture up or something here so you can... Yeah, I will. Here. Bing! Um, <laughs> so you can you can find it. Um, it's such a good game. And if, you, yeah, if you're a fan of it, then it's just like... It's like Damien in the house sort of thing. And you, you need to play this game, basically. I don't really want to tell you very much, but you need to see this game because it's awesome. But, yeah, I'll stop going on about that. Yeah, uh, ratings. I am... Um, Nine and a half. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. Very, really very good. almost, very almost ten. Yeah? Yeah, why very is, almost. Why not really I don't know, I mean, I don't... 
I, I mean, I love the film a lot, but there's bits that I don't remember, and I don't know, I guess it doesn't, I don't know, maybe it's the effects that are kind of pulling, but I don't want to have a go at them, because everything else is so good, and you can't blame it, because you forget how old the film is, you know, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's so almost perfect, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Go see oh. it. Um, I'm going to give it ooh, a seven. I'll give it a seven really? out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Um, not, not as big a fan. Oh well, no, it's close to an eight, but I just okay. think there's a few problems. I think we have with it, like um, it's obviously just datedness, which I don't want to be harsh on datedness because I love watching my old horror films, but um, like the silliness of the mum falling. I okay. just couldn't take it seriously after that. Um, there, Obviously, I had a problem with the fact that the Rottweilers were meant to be evil. They didn't connect to me in the fact that they were evil the whole okay. way through. I was like, it's so good, it's so good for the cheeks. Um, uh, like, there are some brilliant bits about this film, some amazing bits that I always remember when it comes to horror, but then there's a lot of forgettable moments that I find like, um, we had that scene, which was actually quite an important scene, where they go and see like this um, archaeologist. I want to say um, yeah. he was digging where this at a certain point, and he told he was telling Mister Fawn how to kill Damien. Yeah, it's when he got given the knives to kill. Yeah, him and he was told end. about the six 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 bit in his head. That's a really important part of the film, yeah. but I completely forgot about. I think that's it. why mine was a nine and a half because it's like I love it so much, but. It, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be as many forgettable scenes. Exactly. And I think there was a few things in there that didn't need to be in there. Like, for instance, as much as it is a cool scene to sort of show, sort of go, oh, this child is a bit evil. You want to say the zoo scene? No, but that's another one. Thank you for reminding oh. me of that. But <laughs> yeah, the zoo where all the animals run away from him, that went nowhere. Um, and also when they went to go and take Damien to the church. I mean, that went I guess it shows that he, he has this inbuilt sort of fear and it's in him, like he doesn't understand the feelings, but he knows there's this negative feeling and energy towards a church but to home places. It didn't, it didn't play into any yeah. of the film, did it? I mean, it sort of played into the fact that in the ending he had to kill him in a church. I guess it went for the whole, there's a few, obviously that and the zoo and everything led up to there just being a few weird things going on. And then starting to notice something was a bit But strange. then the, the problem I have with that was um, around that time, weird things weren't going on with Damien. I mean, by that point, the nanny had already killed herself. And Damien was literally, I think, I'm pretty sure that it, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure the zoo scene was literally five, ten minutes before he practically pushed his mum over the balcony. So, like, if they were trying to hint at Damien being a bit evil, mm. well, that was kind of just pure evil. The fact that he so. almost killed his mum just because she was going to be having another baby. You know, it just felt like a couple of scenes didn't need to be there. I mean, I think there are some brilliant bits. I mean, like, for instance, a good bit that really sticks with me is um, Mr. Fawn is about to kill his son, and it shows... Um, you hear Damien saying no daddy no daddy sort of thing right. and it was it was good because it's sort of showing that it makes you think that is this child knowing what he's doing is he just being manipulative manipulative I will say it or is he completely innocent and he doesn't know exactly what's going on obviously right at the end you have that wink that he does know what's going on and I think yeah. another reason I take stuff off is because it's not to do with this film, it's not this film's fault, but because there are others after this. I think this film wraps it up really nicely that he's with the president and he's going to become this powerful, horrible thing. But then in the next one, it kind of just sort of rewashes it, which kind of takes away... Because I know that, it takes away my enjoyment of it. Anyway, this review has gone very long, so it's 7 out of 10... Nine and a half out of ten. Right. So that's The Omen done. The next film is... Well, this one was one of her favourites. So the next film is one of my favourites. So we are going to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho next. Which, you know, 
many of you will probably have seen before. I know this one hasn't, so she's looking forward to it. Very excited. Yes, very excited. So, that's what we're leaving you with. Sorry about the really long review. We didn't mean to be as in-depth. But um, join us tomorrow. We will have Psycho for you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yes. <laughs> I promise that. And just remember, all these reviews, they're all for you, viewers. All for you. Oh, nice little thing. Oh, she's shaking her head. I thought that was quite clever. <laughs> right, anyway. Right, see you later. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>